All right, joining me now here on the Matthew Filipovich Show is Michael Denzel Smith. Michael is a writer for The Nation magazine, which you can, of course, find at thenation.com, as well as a Nobler Fellow at The Nation Institute. You can follow him on Twitter at Michael Smith. Michael, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. All right, so Michael, you recently wrote a really great piece at The Nation about how Asada Shakur has now been placed on the FBI's most wanted terrorist list. Now, before we actually get to that and how absurd that is, if people aren't familiar, tell them who exactly is Asada Shakur. Asada Shakur, in in our popular imagination, probably people would be most familiar with her uh, as sort of Tupac Shakur, the, the late rapper's uh, godmother. Um, but she is one of the, the icons of the uh, the Black Power Movement, the Black Liberation Army, the Black Panthers. Uh, and she, I mean, she's a woman from New York City, but grew up uh, mostly in North Carolina, uh, got involved in the, uh, you know, the, the activism of the time, essentially, you know, Got involved with with the, with SNCC and all those those organizations, but you know, as most young people of that time, uh, you know, young black people of that time who were involved in those political actions did, they got restless, particularly after the assassinations of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. Understanding that there was need for, or that it felt like uh, a need for more urgent, more radical action, and so you know, you see the formation of the Black Panther Party. And the the rise of the you know breakfast programs and health clinics that they set up, but also the the increase in, in Marxist language and you know the calls for essentially armed revolution. And then with the the Cointel Pro um, and FBI and J Edgar Hoover, you know, really focusing in on the Black Panther Party, declaring them the greatest threat to you know internal security of the United States. You see, you know splintering of the Black Panther Party and so was born the even more radical, you know, Black Liberation Army in which she got involved in and you see her be be targeted even more so and, you know, she's charged with things like murder and armed robbery along with a lot of other uh, former Panthers and Black Liberation Army members. And so that's what leads to, you know, the, the sort of mythology of her as this kind of, you know, outlaw and you know, but she's she's essentially you know one of the uh freedom fighters of that era and and a lot of and and so eventually we're going to get to what she is eventually convicted for uh many people say falsely and i would probably tend i would tend to agree but like up until that point she was charged with a lot of things like with bank robberies with with all types of murder and and pretty much essentially any time any crime was done by an African American woman in or in on the East Coast, she's essentially getting charged with a crime and saying, "Oh, it's got to be her." Uh, but they actually aren't able. They ever actually never even take her to trial on a lot of things, and and a lot of things they do take her to trial. She's eventually acquitted, uh, uh, you know, several times when that when that occurs throughout throughout her her time here. Right, because it was all a, you know, it was all political stunts. It was all about, you know, trying to arrest Asada Shakur, arrest members of the Black Panther Party, Black Liberation Movement, because they were trying to squash the movement. They were trying to, to you know, the the movement was, was building and they felt it as, as too much of a threat to the security of American democracy. Whenever black and brown people stand up to demand their rights, and demand radical change in the way this country operates, and you know the demands of the you know Black Panthers are food, clothes, and shelter. Like that's those are the, those are the <laughs> basic things that people want, right? Like that's yeah. it. But they very felt, unreasonable like, demands they're making exactly, here. Exactly <laughs> right. But yeah. because of the position, the social, economic, and political position of Black people in this country at that time, and you, you can still you can argue even now. But at that time, you know, the the sort of desperation leads to the idea. You know, we if you're not going to allow us to participate in this system and get our basic needs met, then we have to you know rebel openly, and we have to yeah. tell you openly, you know. These are these are the things that we demand, particularly as Black people whose labor, free labor, and dehumanization built the economic foundation of this country. Yeah, 
Absolutely. So that brings us to uh, what she's eventually arrested for and convicted for, which is a, uh, a, a the, the killing of a police officer in New Jersey. Um, describe what actually happens on that day in New Jersey. What happens is uh, Asada Shakur is in the car with her, you know, her comrades, uh, Zaid Shakur and Sudiata Akoli, and they are stopped for what the state troopers said was a faulty taillight. And in the in the process of you know of stopping them, they tell them to get out the car. And State Trooper Harper, I believe, is his name. He uh, says that they're acting suspicious, and so he pulls a gun on them. Yeah, everyone's told to raise their hands, and everyone complies. Uh, at some point, uh, you know the details because you know the stories don't match. At some point, their gunfire is exchanged. Harper is shooting, uh, and it may have been because the gun was found underneath him. Uh, was would may have been Zaid Shakur returning fire. Uh, there was another state trooper on the scene as well, who's, who's the one who got shot. This is Warner Forster. He arrived on the scene as the gunfire was being exchanged. And Asada Shakur was shot, uh, and as was Zaid Shakur, who was shot and killed that night. They arrest Asada Shakur for the death of both Warner Forster and Zaid Shakur and later arrest Sundiata Akoli for the same crime. Uh, he escaped that night, but was later captured. There's no physical evidence to support the idea that Sada Shakur was able to shoot either Warner Forrester or Zaid Shakur. She had no gunpowder residue on her person. Her fingerprints were found on no gun. And, and in fact, and in, and in fact, she she was shot. She herself was shot with her. What forensic evidence says, well, while her hands were actually in the air, yeah. while you know, her hands, hands are up, and, and that's when she air. gets shot. Yeah, she could not have. There's, there's like a physical impossibility that she could have shot the gun, but she was eventually convicted on the crime of of killing, you know, state trooper Forster, and sentenced to life plus thirty three years. Yeah. And, and so, no, go on. No, and and you know she she you know reported to Clinton Correctional Facility to serve her sentence, but you know, and no one knows the details. No, no one of the movement will talk about how exactly they you know the, the language they use liberated her, how she escaped. But she escaped from prison in 1979, being convicted in 1977. She escaped from prison in 1979, and was essentially on the lam for uh, about five years before landing in Cuba in 1984. And in 1984, that's also Cuba offers her asylum, and she has been actually been living in Cuba since then. And while in Cuba, she writes her autobiography and starts being, you know, starts doing all types of writing. She writes two books down there um, and, 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 is, and is still living currently in Cuba. Yes, yes, yes. So then I guess the question comes is, all right, even if, okay, which, which both you and I don't think that she killed the officer, no. even if, uh, 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 you know, even if you, you, you are, even if, uh, take them for their word, which we don't, <laughs> but it, 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 on the bare minimum, take them for the word, she kills this one police officer, she is then marked a terrorist um and, and and placed on a terrorism watch list and and that and that actually has happened you know throughout the 80s and into the 90s so what what actually happens let's talk about what happens in the 80s and 90s and then we'll get to what's happening today uh you know just in 2013 when she's actually upped even further on that list how do they actually designate her and what is the justification for designating her as not just an escaped criminal but an actual terrorist what is their justification yeah. for that yeah she's i mean she's been on the fbi most wanted list before right but not yeah. the most wanted terrorist list right what happens is you know essentially uh the state of new jersey uh along with the fbi they put a bounty on her head in 2005 um they they increased i mean i think they always they always had a bounty on it but in 2005 they increased it to a million dollars so they've, they've, they've kept this going. Like this is not, you know, like died down and then it's reborn again, you know, but 
essentially every May 2nd or so, um, every every now and then on May 2nd, which is the anniversary of the, the, the night that, you know, the state trooper was killed, along with Zaid Chikor, who was killed that night as well. Um, but at, at about that time, they they ramp it up. And so in 2005, the million-dollar bounty. And then this year, it's the $2 million bounty, as well as placing her on the FBI's most wanted terrorist list. And they're essentially just, they're essentially saying that, you know, her having escaped and lived so lived abroad for this long and having been convicted of killing a, of a, a state trooper is justification for her being considered a terrorist and being placed on the most wanted terrorist list, the, most, the first woman to ever have that distinction. Even though technically they, they have no evidence of her actually doing actual terror, they've still no. they've still put her on, on, on that. They, they have no evidence that she's done anything other than live in Cuba. That's, yeah. really, that's, <laughs> that's all that she has. I mean, she, and she's a 65 year old woman now, and she's a grandmother. And you know, like, and she, I mean, she has she she stayed committed to the causes for which you know she. She has, uh, you know, dedicated her life. She stayed committed to those causes. And if that's the justification for putting her on the FBI terrorist watch list, well, then we have a whole other set of issues, right? Like, are we? this is, you know, for holding different political views, you're a terrorist. But, you know, she stayed committed to these issues, but she has not been active so far as in doing anything that would cause, you know, red flags to go up. She hasn't been plotting against the United States. Like she, she has just been living her life in Cuba, trying to find peace. That, that's that's it. So to place her on the ter- most wanted terrorist list now, uh, particularly when when she has done nothing and if you know as you and i believe she has she was never uh committed in in crime to begin with it's simply just it's just it's frustrating it's angering and it, it's it's scary because you know we, as we know the way that you know the united states has prosecuted their war on terror right yeah it's just been egregious it's been just you know violating civil liberties human rights you know the sovereignty of nations, international, international law, law, U.S. law, yeah, yeah, just the way that they've gone about it by torturing people, but the, these these targeted drone strikes, by the invasion of Afghanistan and Iraq, <laughs> like the way that we've gone about, if 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 Assad Shakur is placed on that list alongside you know members of the Taliban, you know all these people that you know in American imagination are the bad guys, are the ones that we have to go over and we have to bomb and we have to invade their home countries. We have to, you know, protect ourselves. We have to kill them over there so they don't get us over here. <laughs> what right. does that mean for Cuba? Like, what does it mean for Asada? What, are they going to drone strike Cuba? Is it going to be a pretext for invasion of Cuba? And, and you know, the United States holds a grudge like no one else. I mean, we still have embargoes <laughs> Cuba right now, right? Like that we're still yeah. angry with Cuba for kicking us out <laughs> and, <laughs> and after the revolution. Like it, it's ridiculous. And so, is this is this still what what we're looking at? Is is Assad not even the real target here? Like this, this is just the, the number of questions that come up, particularly by placing her on that list in this particular moment. I am talking to Michael Denzel Smith, a writer for The Nation. You can find that at thenation.com and him on Twitter at Michael Smith. Yeah, it, it, it's, 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 again, I, I, you just shake your head and, and it's just like, so seriously, she is a similar threat to American security that someone like Osama bin Laden was. Right. You know, that, that, that just, the same just like, that Osama bin Laden occupied. Like, but, and that's the, that's the other thing, though, right? Like, who do we put? Like, Nelson Mandela was also on the list. So yeah. and then that's the crazy part about who gets designated on this list is do we have political differences with them or do we have legitimate actual, you know, reason for it? And and if you're if terrorism has such a broad definition, then it means nothing. Then in in the the, the pretext for the war on terror, the idea of a war on terror means that you can essentially go and fight anyone anytime. <laughs> 